So good morning again. Uh, yesterday we were talking about the plant elements that are necessary. And I add some extra elements. Usually we don't speak about the hydrogen, carbon or oxygen, but they are very essential, the basic elements for the plants, but we consider these elements plants are getting for free either from the air or from the water. Mostly we speak about the NPK, the secondary nutrients, the micronutrients. They are coming from the soil or from the fertilizers. But like hydrogen, carbon, carbon or oxygen, we get also the other elements that are in the environment. And we need to be aware that these elements exist and ha can have some influence on the plants. Uh, for example, heavy metals, we need to keep the heavy metal in a very low level. But Marco was also uh, telling something about the silicium. Silicium is not a basic nutrient, but it can play a beneficial role for some plants. And in this group, other elements, I put also the sodium, because like the, uh, all the other elements, Sodium is not necessary for the plant growth, but we know that sodium exists and can influence the plants. And in the lit uh, literature, you can find four different groups of plants that give different response on sodium. The first group, we say that these plants, it's for example, the sugar beet or beetroots, they can tolerate 20% 20, uh, 20 sodium of the total potassium demand. The second group can accept 10 to 15% of sodium of the total potassium demand. And there is, for example, the, the spinach or broccoli. And then we have plants that can tolerate only a little bit of sodium, like potato, or, but also the tomatoes, the cucumbers, most of the greenhouse crops and plants that don't like, don't tolerate sodium at all, and we should avoid the sodium. It's, for example, corn, but it's also soya, soya beans. And why do we speak uh, about the potassium when we speak about the sodium? We say that the plant can tolerate 3 to 5% of sodium compared to the total potassium demand. When you look at the periodic table, you can find sodium here and potassium is here. It is the same group of alkalic metals and the physical and chemical properties of sodium and potassium are quite similar and plant can use it in a similar way or they have similar influence. For uh, some plants, uh, especially, I mean the plants that, in a, uh, that are in the first group, the sodophilic plants that can accept up to 25% of sodium. They are sodophilic plants in means that they like sodium a lot. For this plant, sodium is a beneficial element. And if we give sodium to this plant, we can uh, expect the better uh, osmotic pressure control in the cells. The sodium helps to this plant with the better inside transport of the elements. Sodium helps to these plants with opening and closing the stomata much faster. And when we look to these uh, elements, we see that sodium in the plants plays similar role like potassium because for, for, for opening in stomata, Mainly, the, the, we know that the potassium is the most uh, responsible element. And in the sodophilic plants, especially the, the sugar beet, when we deliver some sodium, we can expect even a better growth and better yield. We don't, tell, we don't say that sugar beet can tolerate some sodium, but for this plant, sodium is actually a beneficial element. But this is the end of uh, good news about the sodium because most of the arable crops don't like sodium at all or do not tolerate sodium. And too much sodium, it is always a problem for all the plants. Too much sodium will destroy the soil structure. Too much sodium 
can create problem with the osmotic stress and too much sodium also give problems coming from the sodium itself. It's the ionic stress from the sodium element. It's here. Uh, uh, at my daily job, I visit growers in the greenhouses. Our ba uh, basic crops are tomato and cucumber, and we grow soyless. And to check the EC level in the slab is our daily, uh, everyday uh, job, everyday duty. For increasing the... Uh, we need to keep the EC on a certain level, depending on the crop or depending on the growing stage. If the EC is going too high, then we create the osmotic stress for the plants, and we need to increase the drainage to go down with the EC. For the EC, all the elements are, are responsible, but if we, get, if we have sodium inside our nutrient solution, then the sodium is working extra on top of that, because we know that plants don't accept don't need that sodium, but it is creating the high EC and osmotic stress. And uh, if we create the osmotic stress, it's of course the problem for the plant, it is the problem for the water uptake, it is a problem for the distribution of the minerals, it's a problem for uh, protein synthesis, this is reduced. Uh, all the cell uh, metabolism is slowing down. We can expect also the hormonal imbalance in the plants. Anyway, if we create any stress to the plants, all the photosynthesis and in the end the productivity of the plant is much lower. When the extreme value of osmotic stress is coming, then we can even expect the physiological drought. So it means that in the, other hand, in the one side there is enough water in a substrate for plants, but on the other hand, the water has so high salinity that plant cannot uptake the water. And then we say about the physiological drought. But for the osmotic stress, we can create osmotic stress with other elements. It's not only the sodium. Sodium helps a lot, but the other question is how sodium itself uh, works on the plant. So that's the ionic stress. I said at the beginning that, that uh, physical and chemical properties of sodium and potassium are quite similar. So sodium is always in a competition with potassium. If we deliver too much sodium to the rooting zone, the first victim of that is potassium. We can directly see that the plant uptake less potassium and more sodium. So we can expect that the plant will suffer from the potassium, uh, potassium mm, deficiencies. Yeah. Uh, the next story is that if our plants uptake the sodium and our plants don't need, don't like this sodium, they need to accumulate somewhere this sodium. So they sacrifice the older leaves they put the sodium to the older leaves and the older leaves are less productive and they die much faster than usually. Another thing is metabolic toxicity. toxicity. If our plants are forced to uptake the sodium, the plants are loaded with sodium, the plants need to produce uh, some elements. <coughs> And if plant is taking the sodium instead of, pot instead of potassium and want to create some element and use this element later on, this element is not correct because the sodium was used. So the plant again is taking the new element, wants to take uh, potassium. And again, if the plant is loaded with sodium, it takes the sodium and the final the um, final metabolic elements are not correct. And again, plants need to put them on the side and search for, for potassium instead of sodium. So plant is again loaded with the, uh, with the product of metabolism that are not correct because they are built from sodium, not from the potassium. What we directly see in the, in the leaf analysis 
if there is a high level of sodium and the plant uptake uh, high amounts of sodium, directly plant uptake much more uh, chloride. And this is not always what we want. Maybe sometimes we want that, but we need to be aware that the chloride uptake is the next consequences of the high sodium uptake. Uh, where is the problem coming from of sodium, or is it a problem? This is the river of uh, Vistula, the biggest river in Poland, and the picture is taken this summer. Normally, we should have here two or three meters of uh, water level, but it was almost dried. This is uh, Loara Guy. Where is Guy? From France? Yeah. yeah. The biggest river in France. Normally, it should be full of water, but it was almost dried during this summertime. It's not only the Europe. This is China, the Yangtze River. And this is Colorado River in the America, Todd. Yesterday, Martin started his presentation and he was talking about the water and fertilizer uh, use efficiency. We need to be more efficient to save the water because we directly see on our own eyes that the water is missing. We know that from the many, many years, but today we can observe this in our own eyes. And the big um, milestone that we can do in a greenhouses is to start to recirculate the water. It's the milestone that it is waiting for, for us because it saves a crazy amount of, of water. Here in this country, in the Netherlands, the experience with recirculation is today more than 30 years, correct? But I believe that uh, the first decision that Dutch growers need to recirculate was because of the environment. Yeah, because we have uh, um, a lot of greenhouses concentrated in a very small area, and we saw that there is a lot of water, uh, surface water around, and if these growers were throwing away the water from the greenhouse, they were contaminating the surface water and they were destroying the environment. So the government took the decision, the water needs to stay in the greenhouse and need to be recirculated. Today, I think, maybe from the different reasons, the recirculation system will come to other greenhouses. It seems that the, the real reason will be that we need to save the water or use the water more efficient, uh, in a more efficient way. And uh, Martin was also explaining that if we, if we recirculate, so we use the same water, we collect them, and use it once again, the sodium level in the recirculation water is rising. In the past, we said that when we have the open system, so we can throw away the water from the greenhouse, the maximum level of sodium in a nutrient solution is two millimoles. But very fast, uh, Dutch growers learned that they need to accept higher level of sodium in a nutrient to get the mm, to have the recirculation system efficient. But today the restrictions are even higher and higher, and the government says that all the water that goes into the greenhouse needs to stay into the greenhouse, so all the water needs to be recirculated. So for some growers, in some areas, if they have also really uh, hard water, they need to live with the sodium level up to 20 millimoles in the recirculation water. And this is crazy numbers. How can we reduce the problem? Of course, the water quality, because sodium is in the water. If we can, if we have a chance to change the water source, but it seems that in the future we will not have any chance to change the water source, and actually probably the water quality will be worse and worse. Uh, I think later on today our colleagues from Israel, yeah, 
they will have a story about the water quality. But also the fertilizer quality. Because everything that we put into the water also contain or can contain some sodium. We don't see sodium on a label on, the, on a fertilizer bag, but uh, they are th uh, the sodium is there in most of the fertilizers. So the fertilizer quality will be more and more important in the future. Of course, sodium is in competition to potassium, so we need to simply increase the, the level of potassium in the nutrient solution to give the plants the chance to uptake more potassium and also to give the plant the chance we increase the level of calcium because calcium also helps uh, to the plants to fight with the salini salinity. What I want you to remember that sodium is not a nutrient. All the plants can live without sodium. Sodium can be a beneficial only for the little crops, like sugar beet, but usually we have problem with too much sodium. The first victim of sodium is always the potassium. It's a direct competition between sodium and potassium. So more sodium we deliver to the plant, the less potassium is inside the plant. And sodium, sodium is a real a challenge. It is a challenge for the plant. Plants need to deal with sodium somehow. But it looks like sodium will be a great challenge for us in the future because of the lack of water. For example, uh, today in my country, in Poland, we don't need to recirculate the water. We can still throw away the water from the greenhouse. But in the future, either because of the law, because of the environment, or because of the water, we will be forced to recirculate and we will immediately find the problem with sodium, either for the economy, because today some growers are, are installing the recirculation system because it's cost effective, cost efficient, it's a benefit for the grower. But the future is there. Thank you.